Hey guys, hey, back with me with Hafiz. I'm an IELTS tutor from AZ Education. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are watching from. So, we are going to continue our usual session of IELTS practices. Now, for those of you new to this video, we have uh, an IELTS session conducted every day from Monday to Friday at the same time around this time of the day. Right, and we'll do our best to go through different types of question. Well, one specific category per session and make sure that we go through the best approach, tips and tricks, how a band seven looks like, you know, what you need to do in order to answer a specific type of questions, etc. Right? So um, every session will be very useful for anyone preparing for the IELTS whether that be the academic or the general training. So if you are in need of that, please feel free to tune in to this, to this type of session every day from Monday to Friday, or you can watch the recording of the live stream afterwards, right? And for today, we will be continuing with general training task two, so writing task two, right? Because we did a sample question Previously, but that was to do with one of the uh, basic questions of. Well, actually, we haven't really went. Through, we, ha we haven't really gone through task two. We actually have gone through task one. So today is the first time we're we're actually going to do task two. Now, uh, compared to the IELTS Academics task two, general training task two is usually more simple in terms of the questions, right? Um, uh, but the standard is pretty much the same in regards to the grading rubric and the number of words, the approach, etc. right? It's just that the substance, the substance usually is not as difficult, right? And a lot of the times you, know, you get uh, away with just a little bit more of the homotonous, homogeneous tone that you would usually would get your score reduced with IELTS Academics Writing Test too. All right, so I already have a question in front of me and we're going to start that right now. And there will be a template that we'll discuss a little bit, right? But just to let everyone know, um, in HZ Education, there are lots of courses, there are lots of video trainings, lots of templates as well, very, uh, very valuable at an affordable price. And once you purchase it, you can have unlimited access to all of those things. And it's self-paced. You learn at your own pace and money back guarantee. So if you don't achieve your goal, you get your money back. Please feel free to check them out. Links in the description below. So let's get started with today's lesson. Okay, so just a reminder. So we always have a reminder at the beginning of every session because this is something that you should never underestimate as someone who is still uh, practicing IELTS, regardless of academics or general training, right? And that is to remind yourself, what are the fundamentals in order to achieve the highest score that you can get, which is a band nine, right? But um, generally speaking, you should always strive for a seven at least, right? Always aim higher so that, you know, when you do fall slightly, it doesn't fall too badly, right? But nonetheless, seven is the minimum that you should uh, aim for, right? But to get a nine, the standard is pretty straightforward. Yes, execution-wise, it's not as easy as it sounds, but with enough practice, with enough memorization of the templates, and just making sure you understand on how to implement it and how to input the information, how to deliver your sentences, and enough, with enough exposure to different types of questions, different types of context, it will be less challenging, a lot less challenging for you to get a band eight or even a nine. Okay, so first fundamental is always understand the question, right? Comprehend the question. That's the first step. So fundamental steps. All right, number one. I'm gonna close one second. Just so you know, it's uh, really difficult for me to look at the comment section while I'm uh, presenting here because I, seem to have a difficulty with my second monitor, but I will check um, at some point in the session. If there are any questions, I will do my best to answer them at one point. Okay, so fundamental number one is comprehend the question. I understand, but 
it will not take you that long, of course, right? But it is nonetheless very fundamental. Because if you do not understand the question and you kind of try to rush reading through it, you might miss certain points that you have to address in your answer. And that is usually unforgiving because don't forget, one of the important thing to, to also uh, remember is the rubric itself, right? Don't um, remember the rubric. Right? And the first rubric that you see is task fulfillment or task achievement. And that is basically, did you answer the question or not? Did you, did you kind of focus on what the question is asking you to write about? You go out of your way to, you know, like, write things that are not being asked, that's not focused on the question at hand, those kind of things, right? So that's why comprehending the question is number one, because if you don't fulfill the minimum for the task achievement, it's going to get a lot more difficult to fulfill the rest of the rubric. What, 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 were the rest, what are the rest of the rubrics? Second one is cohesion, right? Basically your flow, how smooth is your writing like when you read it out loud or inside your head does it feel like there are stagnation does it feel like there are hurdles like you pause at points without realizing or it just feels like you can't really transition smoothly from one sentence to another or for from one paragraph to another right the third is lexical resources and range as well so how are you using your vocabulary? Are you correctly using your vocabulary? How many repetitions or how much repetitions are you making in your essay in regards to conjunctions, in regards to action verb, auxiliary verb, model verbs, et cetera, right? And last but not least, of course, grammatical, uh, grammatical range and accuracy. So similar to lexical resources, are your grammar correct? Like, are you using the correct grammar? Um, are you showing a good amount of range? So are you relying heavily on simple sentences? Right? Are you showing enough complex sentences with you know, like subclauses, relative clauses, phrases, noun phrases, using different types of verbs, model verbs, auxiliary verbs, as I mentioned in um, the lexical resources as well. So remember the rubric, right? Because that's something that you need to cons consistently check in your answer. Right, because that's how you guarantee that you get a band seven or higher. Okay, okay, and number three, plan your answer. All right, and I'm going to repeat this as many times as I need to, and definitely in every session where I do writing questions, is that you have to plan your your question. Sorry, your answer. Do not rush into answering your questions immediately because you will slip up at some point and it will be a lot more stressful to fix it once you've started writing. Because if you make a mistake, number one, especially on paper-based tests, you have to erase whatever you have written before or you have to adjust the spacings. It's just a nightmare to deal with, right? Especially if your pencil or your eraser is not smooth as then your eraser is dirty or your pencil is too thick and then when you erase it you still see the, the traces of the former writing or your paper get ripped it's like and that's just not something nice to deal with in the midst of an of an exam right so plan your answer ahead make sure you plan the following things number one right um your main points Number two is your structure. Yeah. And this is something that I also will continuously eat every time I do writing sections. Right? And in terms of structure, we do have a little bit of template on that. Right. And not, last but not least, right, pay attention time. Right. Because in every writing task to question, you will see this. Right, you should spend no more, no more than forty minutes on this task. So with task one, the total is one hour. So with task one, you get twenty minutes. With task two, you get forty minutes. Don't forget that that is the maximum amount of time that you get for both questions. So sixty minutes, right? Whether you want to adjust your timing, that's completely up to you. What you should never let happen is 
underestimate the time, right? So for example, you feel like, okay, for task one, I can finish it in 15 minutes, but you ended up finishing it in 25 minutes. That leaves you only 35 minutes for task two or vice versa if you start with task two, right? So with task two, 40 minutes on the dot, whether you finish or not, make sure you finish task one, right? So task two, try to finish it in 40 minutes exactly if you're starting with task two. If you're starting with task one, finish it that in exactly 20 minutes or if you don't finish it, immediately move to task two and, vi or, and vice versa, basically, right? Because that way, you can ensure at least that one will be fully accomplished and then in whatever time you have remaining at the end, you can use that to finish the previous questions that you did. It. Okay, so please be, be mindful of that. And don't forget, you do not get to carry a watch with you, right? So it's not as easy as it sounds, making sure that you kind of look closely to the time because a lot of the times you will want to spend most of the time just focusing on, on your answer, right? And, paying attention to the time can be easily overlooked, okay? And that's all basically the, the fundamental steps, right? Now, once you um, have those strongly embedded into your mind, then you can commence, right? Then you can commence writing, okay? So, of course, that is after you have planned your answer. Now, let's uh, do each step right now, right? Uh, apart from question four, because you can only do that in the real test. So step one is comprehend the question. So let's take a look at the question. As part of a class assignment, you have been asked to write about the following topic. In Western countries, people spend a lot of money on their pets, right? So let's highlight that. They buy special food for their cats or dogs, buy them toys, and often pay high fees for medical treatment. Okay, so this is talking about pets. Some people think that it is, a some people think this is a waste of money and argue that pets are dirty and dangerous. What are the disadvantages and disadvantages? So this is a, a, an advantages and disadvantages question, which you will you know, most likely come across when it comes to the general training task too, right? Of having a pet. Do people spend too much money on pets? Give reasons for your answer. Now, do not, this is advantage and disadvantages questions. So you have to write both. Now, my advice is to try to balance them out. Yeah, usually that's the easiest thing. It's, it's probably one of the safest way that you can approach this question. Make sure that you balance and not tilt too heavily on one side. Now, of course, don't forget, this is an English test, right? So it's about your, it's more focused on your delivery and your cohesiveness of ideas. Right, so if you do t ended up tilting to one side, whether that be the advantages or disadvantages, do not worry too much about it. Right, focus more on checking whether your delivery has been made cohesively, right, and that you basically f check all the boxes on the rubric. Right, so task fulfillment, grammar, vocabulary, cohesion. Right, so make sure that that is the priority. Right? Why do? Why did I just suggest like to balance it? Just you know, equal amounts of advantages, equal amounts of disadvantages. It just makes it easier to structure your answer, right? Because why? So if you kind of plot one advantage, one disadvantage, that's clearly you can either write two paragraphs where you balance in one in each paragraph one advantages and a contradict or a contrapoint to that advantage. Right, and you do the same in the next paragraph. Let's actually write that down just so that you can make a note. Right, so this is just an example structure. Right, so if you kind of have one one advantage plus one disadvantage, right, that means you in body paragraphs. Right, body paragraphs. Of course, you can simply just have one. Uh, paragraph, right? Where it's one advantages plus one disadvantage. Of course, two better paragraph. Let's make that for each. Oops, that needs to be in the parentheses for each. 
right? So if you decide on one advantage, one disadvantage, right? That means you have to write a paragraph. Each paragraph will contain one advantage, one disadvantage. Or you can have one paragraph focusing on one point, one advantage, and the second paragraph will focus on one disadvantage, right? So that is why it's kind of easy if you have a balance um, content in terms of you know advantage and disadvantages. So you don't you don't get too confused in regards to how many paragraphs should be should be talking about advantages, how many paragraphs should be talking about disadvantages, right? And don't forget one of the key things to also to always remember when it comes to planning your content is that you should not try to show off, right? I'm gonna write that down as well. Do not show off. Again, I'm I've repeated this so many times, and literally just recently, this is an English test, not a knowledge test, right? So if you do come across a topic where you go, ah, this is my domain. I know this topic inside out. I know all the terminologies. I know all the fancy vocabulary, right? Do not be tempted to write literally everything that you can think of, right? Or try to use all the technical terms that you feel would kind of wow the examiner. They are not going to be, trust me, right? Again, this is an English test, so their focus will be, have you delivered it in a way that's you know, according to the rubric, that is it, okay? So please keep that in mind. Do not show off, especially for writing task two. Remember in task one, you know, you, you are given in terms of what you need to write. In task two, this is all on you. You have to come up with the answer yourself, right? So please keep that in mind, okay? Now, that, this is an example. So, in regards to structure, body paragraph, right? Um, what's the what's the, what's the ideal structure? So in HR education, we always recommend five paragraphs. It has worked so well with a lot of our students, right? And it's pretty consistent in regards to what you have to write. So first things first, right? So let's go to structure now. Okay. I'm just gonna actually write this here and put it here so you can see. All right. So in regards to the structure, all right? So we're gonna use five paragraphs. Now, in terms of the execution, it's not going to be just one way. The possibility, I mean. Right, so there will be a variety of ways in which you can deliver your content, right? Again, the crucial point is on how you deliver it. The number of paragraphs should remain the same as in like try to get five, right? If you feel like at some point maybe you don't have enough time or you, know, you are miscalculating or you miscalculated the planning, et cetera, if, and you ended up with just four paragraphs, that's completely fine. But please make sure that you do have that two paragraphs, right? That two paragraphs of introduction and conclusion. For task two, those two are crucial. That indicates, those two indicates basically that you started well your essay well and you ended your essay properly. Not necessarily well, because that needs to be checked in regards to the content, but at least properly, okay? So if you ended up with four body with four paragraphs, that means you will have two body paragraphs. That is fine, right? But make sure that you have the introduction and the conclusion, right? So that's number five. And if you ended up using that in paragraph four, that's also okay, right? But do push for five. It's just like the the the, the probably the ideal amount of paragraphs for this type of writing, right? And if you get like argumentative writing, argumentative questions, or uh, especially in academics where you might get those, to what extent do you agree or disagree? Like five paragraphs is probably a good amount of paragraphs where you can really or thoroughly express your ideas and make sure that you deliver your answer 
in the way that IELTS is asking you to do. Okay? All right, so before we get to the buddy paragraphs, the introduction, as always, with any task two, right? Focus on paraphrasing this. You do not have to come up with anything new. Right? You do not have to come up with anything new. First things first is paraphrasing the, the, the question statement. Right? You will write something after that in, in still in the first paragraph, right? But the first step that you have to do is paraphrase that. Right. So in Western countries, people spend a lot of money on their pets, they buy special food, et cetera, et cetera. You need to just write that in a different way, right? Like it is well, for example, it is well known that people um, purchase a vast amount of accessories um, or essential products for their pets. Something along that line. Right, but you get the point. Basically, you have to paraphrase that. And in age of education, we actually have a specific exercise that will help you to kind of conquer that skill. Because I kid you not, in IELTS, paraphrasing skills is probably going to be the most, um, how do you say it? Like, it basically will be the biggest contribution to determining your ban, right? Because IELTS love paraphrasing in writing, speaking, right? And when it comes to listening and reading, they use it in their questions. They paraphrase their question, they paraphrase the reading passages, right? So that is a skill that I can guarantee you will carry you quite significantly through the IELTS test, right? So if you are Curious about that? Please feel free to check the link in the description below. Okay, so um, let's do a sample, right? There is a, uh, already a fully written sample at the bottom, but I want to show you guys basically the, the thought process, right, in regards to paraphrasing. So don't forget, when it comes to paraphrasing, you are not changing the essentials, right? And when it comes to task two, especially, it's not only about changing the word or the vocabulary or the diction. You have to try to switch up the structure. You have to showcase that grammatical range and accuracy, right? Because that is where the, the, the real valuable score lie, okay? So let's say in Western countries, right? We don't have, really have to say Western countries in that regards. We can just say in general, right? It is known, for example, like I said before, it is known that people, um, let's say, purchase a vast amount of items for their pets, such as food, toys, and medicines. Right, yeah, medicine, medical treatment may be slightly different, but essentially they're the same meaning. Right? It's like it's just in the category of medicine. So I basically turn that first sentence, right, where you can see the, the clauses that it has. One, uh, two, right? There are two sentences, each with one clauses. And then I turn it into one sentence with just one clause. So you switch up the structure. Right? You're not changing the definition. And not only that, right? I made a complex sentence. I started with, it is known. Right? Not something like people know that. Right? I didn't start with an act, simple sentence, active sentence. So you, you want to showcase that kind of ability right? throughout your IELTS test. You want to showcase your ability to make complex sentences where you use subclauses, relative clauses. Uh, noun phrases, right? So basically ways of writing that is efficient, right? Because if you were to write a sentence or a paragraph where the, the sentences continuously do, use the conjunction and, 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 right? Or again, it starts with a pronoun or it starts with, with a subject consistently every sentence. 
that will not get you higher than a five, right? Like five is probably kind of lenient. Again, it depends on the examiner, but again, five is, is the safest bet if you kind of don't show that kind of um, ability to make your answer a little bit, sorry, to make your sentence a little bit complicated. Okay, so anyway, that is what you should do when it comes to paraphrasing. I paraphrase the, the introduction first, right? Um, and then in this case, right, um, you can kind of also immediately connect it with a statement that will introduce what you will say in your body paragraph. We'll take a look at an example in just a second. Right, so kind of like continuing with the structure that we were planning. Right? Number two is, of course, buddy, paragraph one. So what should it contain? Right, again, um, look at the question, understand. So advantages and disadvantages of having a pet. So for first buddy paragraph, you can immediately talk of first advantage. Right, and then third buddy paragraph. Sorry, second, I mean, All right? Let's go to second disadvantage. All right, and then fourth, right? You can maybe decide on either one, uh, sorry, advantage or disadvantage, right? Now, of course, when you see this is like, yeah, but that doesn't look like balance, you know, like how I said it in the beginning, yeah, which is absolutely correct, right? So this is one of those examples where you might lean have, uh, slightly to one of the side, which is okay. It's again about your delivery and how your ideas connect, right? So if you are going to go advantage, disadvantage, or, and then the last paragraph, uh, some it include both advantage or disadvantage, or you discuss only one of them, Yet again, right? Just make sure that you are expanding your ideas. You're elaborating further, make, making your argue, making your explanation stronger and stronger, right? But if you want to take a balanced approach, each paragraph may contain one advantage, one disadvantage. But do note that they have to be in the same category. So, for example, right? Let's say, for example, example of uh, the paragraph idea. Right. So let's say the first one, you want to talk the advantage and disadvantages of, let's say, uh, expenses. Right. So that is the category that you want to pick. Now you have to think about what are the advantages when it's something to do with expenses. What are the disadvantages when it has when it's connected to expenses? So, for example, one of the biggest advantages of expenses is that some pets does do not need that much money for you to take care of it, right? Um, if you just if you are not sure, just name or think of the simplest animal that you can think of that require not a lot of attention, right? And it's like, can take care of itself. Maybe for example, a turtle, right? Maybe, even though you might be like, you might thinking like, wait, but I'm not sure, is a turtle easy to take care of? Well, at the very least, you know, you can kind of make your argument sound in a way that's it's easy to take care of. Like all you need is just a place full of water and pet food, which usually is pretty cheap or like a lot cheaper than, you know, uh, cat food or dog food, right? But that's where the disadvantage lies. Like a lot of the house pets that you can play with are going to be expensive. So you will kind of balance that argument out in the first paragraph, right? And it's in the same category. So you will focus first on the disadvantage and then you will have that con uh, contradicting transitional phrase. Like on the other hand, however, right? Um, unfortunately, while, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that is something um, that you have to be able to do, okay? Another example is, let's say, the maintenance, right? There's a generic term, so basically how 
easy or complicated it is to take care of pets. Again, you may focus right on the kind of pets that needs a lot of attention, the kind of pets that need very little attention. Again, I'll go to the turtle. In the turtle, you don't really need to play with it. You can just let it swim in its own tank, right? But with, let's say, a hamster that needs a good amount of attention, yeah, it's going to occupy a lot of your time, right? So you, you can balance that out, all right? So that's an example. And then you can continue that trend for the other body paragraphs that you want to write out. And then in the conclusion, don't forget the conclusion is simply just a paraphrase of your introduction, right? But it will kind of contain just a little bit more information, but it will only consist of information you have written in the body paragraphs. If you did not write anything in the body paragraphs, as in like there are certain topics or certain talking points that you did not mention in your body paragraph, it should not appear in your conclusion. That's a constant reminder for me, okay? Because your conclusion is a summary basically at the end right, of what you have written, right? What you kind of want to make, uh, you, what you want to reiterate as your main point in this question, okay? All right, so before I take a look at the sample question, I just want to check if there are any comments here. Nope. Yeah, there isn't any comments, so we're going to continue with the questions. All right, so let's take a look at the sample answer, right? And then we'll take a look what band this, this essay, uh, this answer got, and then we'll dissect it and how it did in terms uh, compared to what the rubric is asking, right? So the, the introduction. Okay. This one says, in my opinion, television is the most important technological. Whoa, this one is TV. Okay, I think I, I uh, pasted in the wrong example here. All right. Okay, yeah, this is a uh, wrong sample set. That's okay. Give me just one. Again, let's see if I can pull up the answer here. All right, then let's create it. <laughs> All right, let's create the answer right here, right now. Why not? And I'll try to see if you know, we can discuss that answer questions uh, in another session. And we'll do the entire planning again from the beginning. So let's let's type it out a little bit. All right. All right, so again, all right, let's do from the first paragraph. It is well known that um, people right, um, spend a fortune on uh, Am I connecting back again? All right, I'm back. I think I'm back. All right, <laughs> I think I'm exerting. Uh, slight technical difficulty, people. All right, my bad. Okay. All right, I think I just lost the entire progress here. Okay, give me one second. Let's continue. Okay, so um, turns out that the connection was interrupted, so I'm gonna restart over, right? It is well known. Now I'm not gonna finish the entire answer because we only have like less than 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna give you the overall structure, right? It was well known that people, so this is, I'm just gonna give you uh, a peek at how the, the start of the structure and the middle kind of, uh lay itself lay itself out right so for the introduction right you can start with that generic phrase of it is well known that people it is often argued right um uh another way of saying it is like many people spend a lot of money on their pets it is widely believed 
and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you can rephrase that that uh, question statement right and just make sure that after that right, you can kind of go in my opinion you can do that right because um, this is asking about what you think so you can write in my opinion um, I firmly believe I do believe right, any of that sorts it's fine right and I firmly believe that right and then after that you can introduce you know the balance of the advantages and the disadvantages so for example right you can kind of go um, I firmly believe that this is an example so I'm just gonna separate this right uh, while there are those who um, who see this as a burden, as a massive burden. Let's go. There are also now this counts as a repetition, right? But I'm going to uh, basically write this as an example, and then I'll show you how we can alter it a little bit. Uh, there are also those that value pets in a way that cannot be replaced by anything else. All right, so you are going to introduce that point. That's what you're going to um, elaborate upon, right? That some sees it as a massive burden, while others is you know, considered very valuable to the point that Nothing else can replace it. Now you can see that the structure here is kind of repetitive. Why that bolded into the entire thing. So there are those who, there are also those that. Pretty much the same. So how do you approach that type of uh, answer and just avoid yourself making a redundancy, right? Well, there are those who see this as a massive burden. Right? You can immediately change the second part. You can either keep the first part or you can keep the second part, but try to replace one of them. And you know, when you kind of write this first thing, right? You may not realize it in the beginning, but after, but once you realize it, kind of focus on it when you do have the time and see if you can replace it with something better, right? Uh, those who see this as a massive burdens, well, there are those who see this as a massive burdens. Pets, so you can kind of uh, change the pronoun or the subject, that's usually one skill that IELTS examiner also look for. How capable are you in replacing the subject? Like to changing it into the object or you kind of change it into the pronoun, right? Um, so while there are those who see this as a massive burden, pets can also be valued in a way that cannot be replaced by anything else, right? So for example, that's one way, right? And then in the body paragraph, right? Of course, the easiest way is like firstly, right? Secondly, and then you can kind of go first advantage. Right? And then once you get to the second advantage, you, you can use words like however, um, on the other hand, Right. On the other hand, right. um, while, but, right. what is important is to remember, you do need to write at least two body paragraphs, right? So your transitional phrases should not repeat itself. There are so many phrases that you can memorize. And all of those are also available, by the way, on um, the courses that Age Out Education provides. So please feel free. Check out the, the links in the to check out the link in the description below if you are one of those people who needs to see the complete list of phrases, words that you can easily memorize and apply it in your um, IELTS writing answer. Okay. However, on the other hand, while but meanwhile, right, etc. Right? And then you can kind of just repeat that approach or structure throughout your other body paragraphs as well. Right? So the important thing here is just to make sure 
you have a good balance. So let's do one paragraph as an example, right? So firstly, right, having pets can feel an emotional um, hole in a person's life. Those that have lost a loved one or might or feel. Remember, um, do not use, I don't recommend using words that might suggest hesitation, right? Where you go like, I think I'm, it might, it should. Right, like try to avoid that. It's fine to to just sound confident. Use present simple. Right, you can still use model verb like can, right, um, have, etc. Right, um, sorry, auxiliary verb if it's a have. So those kind of verbs are okay. Just make sure that you you don't sound too unsure about your own answer. Right. So or those that have lost a loved one or feel lonely. Only require um, a, another living being that can accompany them in right that can accompany them. These so I so here right. Instinctively, I would say these people, right? Because like I would say first having pets can feel, oops, that's a misspelling there. That's why I always check your essay. Feel an emotional hole in a person's life. Those uh, that have lost a loved one or feel lonely require another living being that can accompany them. Okay, I haven't actually said people. I said person, so that's fine. Not, that doesn't really count as a repetition. These people... These people will find that in pet after dog or a cat. Cat, cat. Yeah, that rhymes. That's a nice touch. Uh, these people will find that in a pet, uh, in a pet after a dog or a cat. Right. When they are, um, let's say, interacting, right? Instead of using a company again. So we always try to do our best not to repeat vocabulary. When they interact and um, have activities together, right? The, their sense. The persons, so again, repeating the person, but remember, maximum two repetition. The person's sense of loneliness loneliness or even depression at this or. We have already used can a couple of times. One, two. We're going to move that. Person's sense of loneliness and even depression disappear. Right. That's the advantage. And then you can say, on the other hand, you know, pets, yeah, um, maintaining a pet can is right again avoiding uh, using can because that has been repeated a couple of times maintaining a pet is um costly i don't want to say expensive right just so that we kind of see a different variety because a lot of times that's the first word you you will use when it comes to price maintaining a pet is costly right um even the food on its own 
cost up to um, let's rough it up like one hundred dollars a month. Not sure if that's expensive enough, but yeah, if you uh, depending on your country, right, one hundred dollars is definitely a lot for me personally, at least. Can cost one hundred dollars a month, right? A uh, fee. that takes a toll on someone's finance. Well, I wouldn't say someone, I would say anyone's finance. Right. Okay, now, of course you can continue and elaborate it and then have a smooth closing phrase transitioning to the next paragraph, but this is all the time that we have. But hopefully this shows you guys an example. So my apologies, I was supposed to show you guys uh, a simple answer of this question, right? But I just went uh, go and I just went ahead and show you guys how it should look like in terms of your uh, introduction, your body paragraph, right? The conclusion itself, right? All you have to do again is just rewrite the introduction in a different way, and that's that's about it. Okay. Hope this guys uh, hope this sessions help, right? Again, I apologize for the trouble in the in middle of the session and the inconvenience, right? Hopefully in the next session, right? I'll make sure that the sample question and answer do match. Right, but if not, I can also show you guys immediately how that how that question can be answered on the spot. All right, so that is my time, guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment uh, in the video, um, and do check out the website Edge Ed, Ed Education. The links in the description below. A lot of really useful videos, tips, and tricks that you you guys can access for an unlimited amount of time. It's money back guarantee. So if you don't achieve your goals. You get your money back, no question asked. All right, that's my time. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.